surgery and muscular strength. The effects that surgery of the lower extremity has on muscular strength in young adults. Starring Angela Catrone, Colleen Coleman, Alejandro Ramos. <laughs> Research in the hip and the knee. How to strengthen muscles change from the beginning. Do they get stronger or do they become weak? How do they recover after surgery? Searching all of these EEPs. Research strength of muscles after recovery. Has your gain strength more quickly? The sooner they start working, the better you will be. Our plan. <laughs> Our, plan. Our plan. What else could the study show? Hey, yo. What could they have changed up? Hey, uh. What if we were in their shoes? Hey, what? All the assessments we could choose? Yeah, wait. Postural balance it in reach. Harder to do than to preach. But still. Our first study shows the muscular strength prior to an injury and how it could affect that. So in the, the aim of the study here was to investigate the influence of lower extremity muscle strength on traumatic knee injury. And it, it was in Sweden and 225 high, schooler, high school athletes were chosen and they all had to do the 1RM barbell squat test in their first or second year, similar to those um, to the test that we performed in our lab section. So with that data, they were either placed in a strong or a weak group. The strong group had 1.05 relative strength or greater, meaning that they could barbell squat 105% of their body weight. And the weak group did not succeed that relative strength. Then during the next three years, their injuries were recorded. And it's, the male athletes were split 50-50, so there was no correlation between muscular strength. But for the females, 23 female athletes who were the, part of the weak group, so who did not achieve 1.05 relative strength, they were injured during the next three years, showing that their weaker lower extremity muscle strength really made a huge impact on traumatic injury. And the reasons for these injuries could have been worse neuromuscular control strategies, so they just lost the neural connection, they weren't able to control it, or especially a big one was lower hamstring to quadricep torque ratios, which we had also learned is a very big deal and you need to have that 2 to 3 ratio in order to have optimal function. Alright, so let's dig a little bit deeper. Um, we looked at a study that kind of dove a little bit deeper into six months after surgery um, for an ACL tear. So with the alteration of the strength of the quadriceps and the hamstrings, um, they kind of took about 50 people and buckled down and looked at the common injury which happened through skiing, basketball, as well as football. They noticed that the ACL was the essential stabilizer for the knee um, for anterior translation um, through the tibia and the femur. So what they hypothesized is that the muscular strength of the operated side of the ACL ligament uh, after the six months after surgery shows some muscular weakness. Um, which was to be expected in the quadriceps and the hamstrings. However, they were assuming that the motor performance um, would be dependent on the total recovery of the muscle strength of these young athletes. Um, so they really wanted to evaluate the isokinetic uh, muscle strength uh, after six months of the ACL surgery and see the rehab in the young athletes. Um, so in conclusion, after um, bringing along 50 different patients ranging from ages 18 to 45 years of age um, with a complete rupture of their ACL. They did a Kenneth Jones technique, which was like basically drilling into the tibial and femur bones. And through week two through four, they did light weight bearing activities to see like some gradual advancement over time. And then month three through four, they actually did some running. So they started really applying pressure 
And what they noticed is that they would only allow the individuals to return back to their sport after having 70% of their quad strain. Um, so that was only evaluated through the biodex, um, which is shown to our uh, left here. Um, and so that kind of was able to like measure out the torque values and the uh, different points of the body, especially assessing through the joints to see what was stabilized and what wasn't. Um, and in the results, they after the operation, they found that the hamstrings recovered a lot quicker than the quadriceps um, by 0 0.60 through the biodex scan, um, resulting in them actually uh, not concluding to their hypothesis as thinking that both of them were going to take equal amounts of recovery. All right, so now we're delving into the hip surgery and how muscular strength might be affected from that. So in this study, it was a comparison of three different surgical approaches, one being the total hip arthroplasty, and there's a posterior approach and the anterior approach, and also the direct lateral approach. And they just studied patients who had received these different types of surgeries, and it showed that the total hip arthroplasty was just it had the worst effect on the muscles and these the muscle group had a very hard time recovering from this the best approach being the posterior and it allowed the least negative effect especially on abduction and the leg press muscle muscular strength um, especially on the hip flexors now, we also have another hip study, which is the recovery and mechanical muscular strength following a resurfacing versus, again, the total hip arthroplasty. So they thought that the resurfacing would, the muscles would enhance uh, rehabilitation and that they would recover quicker versus the standard total hip arthroplasty. However, it showed that they both experienced asymmetry of the muscles and especially the weakest um, in the hip flexors and those, those were the most affected. So even after 52 weeks of the hip surgery, these muscles had a very hard time recovering and they were just very slowly but surely getting to a rehabilitated state. Okay, so next we'll talk about the ACL effects on younger athletes. And this study showed that um, it was basically to sh show how the arthrofibrosis had an effect on people with ACL injuries because it's a it's a kind of a like a holder on how uh, far you can bend your knee in terms of motion. And they tested 169 athletes in terms of this. So they did uh, one group before a week of actual uh, actual ACL uh, surgery, and then they did uh, another group within eight days. And then another group from 8 to 21 days. So based on the data, it showed that uh, that the first group didn't perform as well as the third group. The third group was the best group out of all of them, which are the people that had surgery after the 21 days. So this effect, the, for the first group, the effect uh, the arthrofibrosis had an effect of only 0.5. So that means that they only gained about half of their, uh, their range of motion after the surgery. So... The third group got their surgery after uh, 21 days, so that means that the better way, the better route to go for athletes is to have the surgery after 21 days, so they can let their the um the surgery heal and process and give it time. So after they can just focus on the range of motion. So that's the way to go for the ACL. All right, we're back at it again with ideas, thoughts, and experiences. So the big crucial factor that a lot of our articles missed were static postural assessments, kind of engaging the core and looking at it, as well as like the bend and lift screen to see the quadriceps and hamstring imbalance, uh, goniometry, looking at the range of motion, passive straight leg stretch to kind of see if the hamstrings were engaged and could even go into that range of motion. The sit and reach, again, idolizing the uh, hamstrings as well, as well as the Y balance to see the core in relation to the lower extremity. So I feel like a lot of that was actually missed. Um, and so it was kind of bypassed instead of looking at the whole entire part of the body, the core, in relation to the lower extremity. And Alejandro here has some personal experience he'd like to share with us. Yeah, as someone who's had an ACL surgery back in 2012, I remember that I had my surgery two days after the injury had happened, and uh, I had to sit on a cast for about two months before I could actually start the rehab uh, process. And I remember at first I had to start off by gaining back that core strength because uh, 
the core is a, a big part of the balance and you need the balance to gain strength back in, back in your legs. So I spent like two or three weeks focusing specifically on that core and then starting to get on the bike and getting that leg, that leg strength back. So the total uh, process of that whole ECL probably took about almost close to a year to gain everything back. So it was a pretty rough experience, but it was worth it at the end. That's a long time. And here we provided a reference page for all the sources that helped research uh, everything that we had and made our research possible. Ha, ha, ha.